vaccine. In Dr. Jekyll's laboratory, another intense operation is being conducted. After 12 hours, he comes out. Staff nurse, sir, you have done another operation. You are great. Dr. Jekyll, that revenge and killing is solely for avenging the person who killed my love. From past experiences, I have implanted a small bomb inside this person's brain. If he betrays me, I will kill him instantly. Also, from today onwards, I won't perform operations on anyone else until I take down King Omex. Dr. Jekyll receives a call from government officials. Dr. Jekyll to his staff nurse. Now, I authorize you to preserve all the precious brains, and we will start this work after I deactivate that person. I have created an assassination plan and removed all the bandages from his face and head. He calls out the name Patcher, wake up. Minutes later, Patcher opens his eyes. Patcher assassin. Where am I? The last thing I remember is dying during a fight with more than 30 ninjas. He looks around, curious about his surroundings. Dr. Jagel, I have given you a new life in this body, and you have to do one task for me. After that, you can live your life as you want. Patrick, my objective has always been to become the greatest assassin, and I will kill anyone for it. You gave me a new birth in this body, so I will do it for you. After that, we will go our separate ways. Dr. Jagel, yes. I will provide you with information about that person. Dr. Jekyll shares all the information with Pacha, including what he experienced in the laboratory and how his secretary died at the hands of King Omex. During the story, Pacha recalls memories of his wife and children, whom he left behind during the battle with enemies and whom he hadn't seen before he died. Patcher, I want to see my family once. Dr. Jagel, your body was reincarnated more than 200 years later, and during these 200 years, no one from your family has likely survived. Patcher, but I still want to see them. He heads to the location where his home is situated. When Patcher arrives, he sees some people still in the house. The condition of the house suggests that it will be demolished soon. He remembers the walls of the house and reminisces about the moments he shared there. Dr. Jekyll arrives at the location with his staff nurse. Dr. Jekyll, you now have a lot of memories of your wife and beloved child. I hope that if we have their preserved brains, we can help you overcome this situation. He tries to offer support. Patrick. I left them at home and went into battle with many people. And I lost them. Dr. Jekyll. How can I support you in your sentiments? He thinks for a moment and then says, Now that you have been given a new life, enjoy it and forget your past. You have already died before. And now your brain functions within the body of another person. Patcher looks at his old house for a few minutes and then asks Dr. Jekyll where he can find King Omex. Dr. Jekyll smiles and says, yes, that King Omex. I have some photos of him that you can have. Patcher heads towards the city, following the road. Next scene. In the evening, Alex goes to the hospital where Keo's girlfriend is lying in bed. Alex, what is Keo? Keo's girlfriend. He isn't here right now. He went out to get some medicines for me. Are you Alex? Alex, yes. Kyo's girlfriend tries to stand but falls off the bed. Tears well up in her eyes. She says, you saved both of us and no one else could have done what you did. You are our savior. 
Alex, I always want to help people, and it's my kindness that led me to assist you. I'm glad that you both are safe. Kyo enters the room. Kyo. Alex, why did you join them, and what kind of work have they assigned you now? Alex. Today, they gave me a drug selling task, and I completed it carefully. Kyo. If they assign you any arms dealing activities, avoid them. There is a huge risk involved, and many people have died in arms dealings. Alex. I'll take care of it. Kyo. Please save yourself. Your life secures our lives as well. I'll find someone who can replace your position in the organization. So, until then, please don't engage in any risky activities. Alex. Don't worry. I won't die. I'm immortal. Last I assure you that I will bring down the kingdom of the Clark's proprietorships and take them all down. X seen Diaga talking with his gun members. Diaga, sitting in his office, discusses the situation with his secretary, Christian. Diaga. Hey, Christian, where are my two sons? I haven't seen them for months. Christian, secretary. Sir. They have been extremely busy with their own work. Their efforts have helped us gain more control over the city and our illegal activities. Diago receives a call from one of his gang members. Gang member. Sir, some of our gang members are missing. Diago. Where are they missing from, and which group do they belong to? Gang member. Sir, they belong to both the Adino and Gilbet gangs. Diago. How many men have we lost now? Gang member, sir, around 70 to 80. Diago cuts the call and a look of anger appears on his face. He turns to his secretary. Diago, call both of my sons immediately. They have made a big mistake this time. The secretary calls both Adino and Gilbert, and they arrive at the office. After they arrive, Diago, I trusted both of you, and now we have lost 80 men. But we don't even know who did it. Adino, Father, I sent some more men from our gang, but I haven't received any updates from them yet. I hope they will update us soon. Gilbert, Brother, the gang members you sent to the abandoned school building were all killed by one person. Diago, Wait, so you're saying that one person killed all 80 of our gang members? I know your gang members aren't as skilled as those from Adino's gang, but Adino's gang members were also killed by the same person. How is that possible? Gilbert. Father, I don't have much information either. Trent is working on it to gather more information about our enemy. Diago. Well, start working on it immediately. This situation undermines our power and instills fear among our gang members. We need to find that person. Go to your respective locations and track them down. And then the meeting ends, with both brothers walking in the corridor and having a discussion. Gilbert. So, do you know anything about King Omex? And why didn't you share the name of that person with father? Adino. If I tell father the name of that person, he will solely focus on finding him himself. I want to discover and eliminate him without anyone knowing. Gilbert. Well, I will find him before you do and take care of him my own way. They both leave the office. In the next scene, Alex arrives home. As he enters the house, his mother approaches him. Alex's mother. So, who is she? Alex. Whom are you talking about? Alex's mother. The girl who was in your room. She said she's a good friend of yours and that you allowed her to stay here today. 
Pipes rushes to his room and finds Alessa sitting there. Alessa. Hi, Alex. Did you finish your work today? I told your mom you would be busy, so I stayed here. Alex. But why didn't you stay in a hotel or with any of your friends? And where is your friend Lily? You could have stayed with her today. Alessa. You know, I don't know many people around here, and all the hotels are full due to the holiday season. As for Lily, she's staying with Martin. Alex. So why didn't you stay with Martin then? Alessa. He said he couldn't afford me, and there seems to be some unresolved issues between us since the station incident. Maybe he wants revenge today. Alex. But why involve me? What does my mother think about all this? And you haven't told her about my work. Alessa. No, I haven't told them anything. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. Alex's mother calls out to Alex. Alex's mother. Alex, open the door. I'm busy in the kitchen. Alessa, I'll help your mother with dinner. Alex, please don't do anything. Just stay here. I'll open the door. Alex goes to open the door while Alessa disregards his words and heads to the kitchen to assist Alex's mother. Alex opens the door. Lucia. Hi, Alex. So, have you been enjoying your new work? Alex. Looking shy. Which work? Lucia. You didn't mention that you got a job at Dr. Robin's laboratory and that you've been busy there. Alex. Oh, you mean that work? Yay. I'm working there. Lucia. So, you've been working at any other place as well? Alex. No, no. I don't have much free time to work at another company. After finishing at Dr. Robin's laboratory, I haven't had time to go anywhere else. Hopefully, Dr. Robin will understand my situation when I inform him tomorrow. Lucia, what were you thinking? Have you had dinner? As she hears the sound of Alessa, she runs towards the kitchen and sees Alessa cooking with Alex's mother. Lucia directly asks Alex, who is she? Is she your girlfriend? Alessa, looking at Lucia, answers, No, we're just friends. We met today, and he invited me to have dinner at his house. Lucia. Impossible. Alex never shows interest in any girl, and he invited you. Are you lying in front of everyone? Alex. She's telling the truth, and she only plans to stay here for today. Lucia, hearing only for today, feels her heart skip a beat. She thinks to herself, yeah, Alex isn't interested in these kinds of girls. He likes me, and that's why he's always happier around me. Then she says, so, instead of staying here, you can stay at my place tonight. Our house is next to Alex's. Alessa, if Alex doesn't have a problem, then I can stay at your house tonight. What do you think, Alex? Alex quickly responds. Of course, you can stay at Lucia's house tonight. After dinner, Lucia and Alessa go to Lucia's house to spend the night. Alex is deep in thought, contemplating how to bring down the clock's proprietorship and how he can help the people who are forced to work under the two brothers. Then he receives a call from Dr. Robin. Dr. Robin. Hey, Alex. Did you forget about your work? Where are you? I didn't pay you for your absence. Alex. Dr. Robin. I got another job, so I can't come to the laboratory. Dr. Robin. Where are you currently working? Alex. 
I'll let you know in a few days. I still can't say anything about it. Dr. Robin. Remember, we always have our door open for you. If you ever feel like coming back here, I welcome you. Alex. Thanks, Dr. Robin. The Glow Cuts. This was episode 8 of Mystic Skeleton. If you enjoy the story and want to continue our journey, please subscribe to our channel. Additionally, you can purchase the ebook from SDCK, me and Amazon. Thank you.